What's up guys, ViperFV here, and today I'm going to be telling you guys about Emu Flight and showing you guys how to flash it. And then in a future video, I'm going to be doing like a, a pretty much a flight and then kind of going over what I feel and what I felt is different or if it's better or whatever. So let's go ahead and tell you about Emu Flight. So what Emu Flight is, is the fork of Butterfly. Now Butterfly has been pretty much dead in the water for the past uh, over a year now. Uh, it looks like may no june 2018 i believe is the last update to the butterfly configurator and then that's when butterfly kind of started going the pegasus and then helio died and all that big big mess but the good news about emu flight is that if you always wanted to try the imuf firmware um, you can use it with any flight controller it does not have to be a helio spring it does not have to be a strix f10 it can be any flight controller and you can get the benefits of the imuf that everybody was praising so much about um, also, I'm uh, Emu Flight provides the buttered pids. They call them feathered pids, a little different name. And also, it has a lot of other little unique things like Emu Boost, Boost Limit. Uh, GPS has been updated to allow for a sort of geofencing to make flying in French regions legal. I mean, there's there's tons of little different things that they've added to Emu Flight to make it stand out opposed to Butterflight and Beta Flight. So. Let's go ahead and dive in and show you guys how to flash it. And then um, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to do a flight here. Uh, I'll probably do that in a future video, probably here in a week or so. And uh, I'll give you guys my thoughts. Um, I will be flashing this on a Helio Spring. Uh, this is a Helio Spring, so don't throw away your Helio Springs. Do, don't, don't throw them away. <laughs> Try Emu Flight and see how it does. So let's go ahead and uh, Flash this thing up. I'll show you guys how to flash it. I'll even show you guys how to uh, flash a you know regular flight controller. It's really actually more simple than doing a Helio. So let's go ahead and get to the computer and show you guys what you need to do. All right, so we are in Emu Flight, and I'll be leaving a link to this configurator in their GitHub down below. Uh, you just want to go ahead and download it and install it onto your computer. And then we'll also need another program as well. If you're using a Helio Spring flight controller, you will need to get the IMUF flashing tool, which I'll leave a link to that below as well. Um, but once you have those downloaded and installed on your computer, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and connect because we need to go ahead and get this flight controller into DFU mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to say this and say clean flight, IMU flight firmware is not supported. That's fine because we haven't flashed it yet. We're going to go ahead and go in here and type in BL. That's going to put the flight controller in a DFU mode. You see it right there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the firmware flasher. Let it load up real quick here. And this board I'm using is the Helio Springs. And we're just going to go ahead and pick the newest one they have. So a 925 is the newest version. We want to do a full chip erase. Make sure that's selected. And then we want to click on load firmware online. And then click on flash firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and flash this, let this finish, and then we'll be right back. All right, so after you went ahead and you're done um, flashing the firmware for Emu Flight on the flight controller, this next step is on the only applies to Helio Spring flight controllers. So we want to go ahead and come over to where we downloaded that configurator for the IMUF on my computer. It is, I downloaded it to my downloads drive, so it's right here. Unflash it, and just make sure you got it. And then when you click on it, right click, click Run as an Administrator. Don't get any warnings. And then go ahead and click on Ports tab. So then it shows your COM port. And then you need to click on Connect. And then you'll get this right here showing that you're connected to this uh, program. Then you need to go ahead and do is download the IMUF update, which I already downloaded off the GitHub page, which I'll leave a link down below. And just go ahead and click on Firmware. So I already did it. Went ahead and picked that. And then I'm gonna click on Flash Firmware. And then right here, it's going to go ahead and do is it's going to start running, you know, whatever code it has, flashing everything, and then it's pretty much done. So once it says it's done and successful, uh, it's still updating. So we'll let this finish, and then we'll come right back to Aim of Flight. So you pretty much be brought to this screen once you get in. And first thing we need to do is we need to set up our ports tab. And I already know that I have my actually it did a backup, which I probably should have told you guys in the beginning. Do a backup actually would help out and so you know what settings you need to use. Right, so I got my dump out. So I have my receiver is actually on UART 3. That off, UART 3. And I'm going to put my tramp. I have a tramp on this one. On that. Click on save and reboot. 
So it's really just kind of going over all the settings and just changing them to defaults um, and just putting in your specific settings. Um, looks like this thing is already enabled gyro 32K sampling. Accelerometer, we're going to shut the accelerometer off because we don't need that. Save reboot. Now with the Helio Springs, it will show that 32K on there because it always runs at 32. The gyro is always at 32. It's really just how much you're pinging or how much data you're getting off of it. So this is why this is at 1616. It's preferred to use multi-shot, but I like D shot 1200. So I'm gonna be using D shot 1200, 1616. If you wanna do 3232, uh, you can do that. And you just need to use that with multi-shot, 3232 selected here. But from my perspective, I'm gonna be using this as 1616. Now, if you're using a regular flight controller, if you're using the like, a seal racing f4 anything that's not helio this will need to be set to 8k or 4k depending on what you know how it flies at 8k 8k might not fly great if it doesn't fly great try 4k 8k might actually fly better it really depends on your flight controller your escs and everything in your rig so but this since this is a helio i'm really confident that this is going to be 1616 i'm going to run d shot 1200 and like i said before if you're running um when we're on 32 so you can click on 32 here on both and then click on multi-shot as your esc protocol just because dshot 1200 cannot do 32k can't send enough data to be able to do that so now i'm going to name my quad here lost style had this guy for a while i actually love it and everything else is fine and then i need to Crossfire receiver there. I have to make sure this is enabled correctly. Anti gravity. See, they always have any gravity off on these Helios. I'm going to leave it off just to see how it flies. If I don't like it, I'll enable it. But I've seen a lot of people say um, leave it off because it does in introduce some problems. So I'm going to leave it off as they suggested. So, and then I need my buzzer. I'll activate my buzzer when I put the switch on. And all this stuff can be fine. So, be done there. Come on. Connect. There we go. So now we did that. I don't have to change anything in there. Pit tuning. I just need to change my rates. Put those in real quick. nine and you could just do a cli dump and you can uh diff all and just paste everything but since this is i'm going from butterfly has butterfly on this originally uh to um this i just want to go ahead and start fresh settings so sorry i didn't catch that do you please repeat really phone i didn't i didn't say siri you didn't uh, all right so expo, all that's done. So leaving everything else alone, we're going to hit save. Doesn't need to reboot or anything. This one, I need to change my, this might be different. This is according to my radio. D-A-E-R, RX channel is on eight. So then I can see it in my, my RSSI and my goggles. And everything else should be fine. So we'll click on save and reboot. Notes tab, I know my arm switch is on aux one. Boom. I don't need my buzzer. Deeper, actually. That. And then my OSD is going to enable, set that up here real quick. The old OSD doesn't have like the multiple profiles. Hopefully they'll add that because I really do like the profile in Beta Flight 4.0. Battery usage, battery voltage, fine. My 
RSSI, and then I should be pretty much done with that part. Actually, I need my timer too. All right, save that. And then some down things down here I don't usually use. I actually don't use milliamps. I just like to use battery voltage. Um, the max you'll need. That's good. All right, so that's it for that. All right, so that is pretty much Emu Flight in a nutshell. That's how to flash it and some little settings to play with in the configurator. Uh, but stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, like this video if you found this video helpful, uh, because I'll be going ahead and flashing, um, not flashing, but flying this quad and giving you guys my thoughts on Emu Flight versus what was on it before, which was Butterflight. And I do f definitely fly Butter Beta Flight, so I'll give you guys my thoughts and uh, we'll go from there. So. I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.